Hi everybody, Adam Steele here, and today I'm going to be showing you a cool brand new feature of Reaper that I'm really excited about. I think that in many ways it's going to be improving my mixes over other DAWs, and that is oversampling. So oversampling is something that's been around for quite a while, and what it is, is um, it takes whatever sound you have at whatever sample rate you're working with, and it kind of converts it up to a higher sample rate to do whatever processing is needed before bringing it back down. A lot of the time it's not needed, it's pointless, uh, but some processes, like especially anything that adds distortion or any sort of like high-end like amp modeling or any sort of extra harmonic added into a signal, can introduce a thing called aliasing. Aliasing is a problem uh, in the digital world where if you've got a sound that has harmonics that go above the sample rate you're working at, which is in usual cases, let's say 20 kilohertz, it kind of folds back in and creates some horrible noises. And oversampling is a clever way to get around that. And now Reaper can do this with any plugin pretty much from any company, whether that plugin supports it or not. Let's take a look. If there is a plugin that you use that has oversampling inbuilt, it's probably better for you to use that option. But a lot of plugins don't give you that option. Some do it in the background, but most don't. So what you can do, this is a mix as a good example uh, that I've done for a little mix competition that's going on in the Produce Like a Pro Academy right now. Uh, I'm kind of entering for fun, uh, but this is a song by The Matthews, and I've used all stock Reaper plugins just for the purposes of the competition, and I have oversampled most of the plugins, and it sounds like this. Now, there is some volume automation I should probably do on this stuff to make it that extra little bit further, but that's that's not the scope of this video. Now, what we can do is we can open up any plugin that's already in our project, like I've got this Reaper EQ right here, and there's a tiny little plus button on the top bar which pull, pulls up a load of options. And the new one here is either chain oversampling, which is the entire effects chain for that channel, or FX instance oversampling, which means only this plugin. And by default, of course, there is no oversampling because of the performance penalty. It's very CPU heavy, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But you get options to oversample up to 96, 192, 384, or 768 kilohertz. Now, there is a diminishing point where you know you're not going to get a return on the extra CPU. And importantly, a lot of plugins from third-party developers don't support super high sample rates. So just be aware of that. Uh, many of them do, but I know that like for a long time, Waves only supported up to 192 kilohertz on a lot of their plugins. Um, I don't know if that's still the case, uh, but it's worth checking out. If you try and do this with any uh, plugin that doesn't natively support it, it might crash the door, it might just produce no sound. Those would be reasons why. So be careful when you're experimenting with this. Hit save before you do anything. Uh, give it all a try. And also, if you use the reinsert plugin, which is the plugin that allows you to use external hardware, that will not support oversampling because there's no physical way to do that. Uh, whatever goes out of your interface and back in goes in at the sample rate you are working at. That's just the way that uh, digital and analog converters have to work to all stay in sync. So uh, these, um, I've used the inbuilt compressors, bad bus mojo and a multiband compressor. That's a lot. And let's just change that all back to single processing. It probably won't sound that different. This is the kind of thing where it's tiny, tiny little things that all add up to, in my opinion, 
a clearer mix and less clouded, less kind of mush in the top end. So here's a single vocal. Me. I need you here tonight. Don't me. And now let's put oversampling to 192k. Now that's probably doing very little in context, that, out of context, sorry, that, that is hard to kind of follow. Um, but I found that with this mix, I went to the lengths of having um, everything with no oversampling than with oversampling. And I found things like I had to turn the entire snare bus down by nearly 6 dB because the limiters were so much clearer that the snare was overbearing everything. I think that's just because the limiters, they really deal with uh, high end. So I was using the Event Horizon Clipper and a Relimit, the Reaper Limiter. And by putting these into absolutely insane oversampling at 768 kilohertz, which is to say 16 times oversampling, that really made the whole mix come out with some extra clarity. Let's try that on this really busy bit. And now to know of a sampling. It's very hard to notice. We're talking really finer points of small amounts here. But for me, when it comes to, and I'm going to be using this on a lot of my mixes in future, when it comes to the nth detail and really getting picky, I like to get picky when we get to that point in a mix. And oh, that this is going to make a lot of difference to me because things like uh, clippers take a lot of high frequency harmonic content into consideration. Uh, limiters um, and uh, EQs that are using a lot of high-end information. Um, all those kind of things, like this bad bus mojo on the vocal that is a distortion. Like A really good example that I saw uh, John from the Reaper blog use was uh, Sound Toys Decapitator. And I don't want to copy what he's done on his channel, but uh, there was a lot of um, distortion kind of issues in Decapitator because it doesn't oversample. So let's try a little bit of that. Let's just bring that up. I need you here tonight. Don't me. Even There's a lot of mush going on in that. Um, let's put no oversampling though. I need you here tonight. Don't me. Even though I'm not I need you here tonight me. It's real again re really hard to describe on a YouTube video because it's one of those subtle things but I think it's making quite a big difference um especially in the high end uh, it's kind of bringing out clarity and it's a cumulative effect now I keep bringing up the CPU performance window this is the performance meter and any of these where the chain has some oversampling on, you can see here there's four times next to where I've oversampled up to 192 kilohertz, and the master's got 16 times on, uh, which means that it's using way more CPU power than it was before. Now, my mix machine is incredibly powerful because I do full mixes with loads of third-party plugins at crazy sample rates while streaming. I need a monster. So where my master is using 0.26% of uh, the processor, and it's got a lot more latency, by the way, uh, because what's happening is it has to take whatever sound that channel has up until that point, convert that up to the sample rate, process at the higher sample rate, then convert it back down again. And of course, a lot of people say you shouldn't resample unless needed, and oversampling is conversion that 
can make things worse, of course. So what's happening there is there's a potential that this is less good, not more good, and at the expense of a lot of CPU. But it depends how good the conversion algorithms are, uh, how much better the processing is that you're doing at the higher sample rates. Uh, it, there's a lot going on. So where we can see on the master that it's got 0.25% of the CPU, that doesn't sound like a lot, but this thing's an absolute monster. If I turn that back to no oversampling, and yeah, that's gone down to 0.02%. So that's 12 times the CPU usage, if not more, by clicking that button and then hitting play. Yeah, that's put the, uh, the latency way up. That's put the processing amount way up. Let's use as another example, uh, what do I use? Uh, I use the black box HG2MS on mixes a lot from Plugin Alliance. So I'm gonna put that before my limiter and just. There we go, so that's now over a percent of my uh, CPU. I'm impressed that that even works. Uh, let's go to no oversampling. So that's 0.19% of the CPU that goes up to, let's go to 192. That's a small bump, smaller than I thought. If I go to 768K. But that's the kind of thing that's cumulative. My uh, effects bus on the master is quite often uh, a lot busier than this as well, like with the Shadow Hills mastering compressor. And I'll just turn off the event horizon and go for, what else do I use? True Iron by Kazrog. And just let's just load all this up and see where we get to. And a limiter, let's use... Uh, what's it called? Flatline from Submission Audio. Now I'm going to hit save. Now, yeah, so our processor performance without oversampling is 0.4% and with all of it, But yeah, the, um, that's that's another thing. Yeah, the the true iron plugin doesn't like that sample rate. Right? Let's try three eighty four and see if it does that. We can see that um, Flatline has uh, the options for up to one hundred and twenty eight times oversampling, which it even says in here. If you can read that, completely pointless looks good on meters. So there is a reasonable point beyond which even some of the third party uh, plugin developers are saying this is kind of pointless, but uh, they reckon uh, uh, that 16 times oversampling is balanced CPU usage and high quality for that. But that's the end limiter. But the fact that we can now do this with any plugin that will support it, it's very interesting and it's gonna be heavy on your CPU, be careful, but have fun, experiment, see if you find a difference, try exporting uh, the same project, save a new project, and then try exporting with um, oversampling and without and see if it makes a difference that you like. The other thing, ooh, I'll just dive, dive back quickly, is if you go to the project settings under file and project settings, uh, right here in the middle of this is playback resample mode. So you can change the default resample modes and i like the new rate brain free which it says is the highest quality and is quite cpu light but if i put that on highest this is what it uses to resample in the uh, in the high quality oversampling so if i hit okay on that that 
just turned up the CPU usage there. Uh, but that may well be that uh, you want to do this, especially on render to some of the highest highest quality uh, options that you can have, uh, because that will then enable you to have a much better um, chance at the uh, oversampling both ways being something that is less detrimental, which means that the processing at higher sample rate might be more helpful. So, yeah, that's a complicated one. But, yeah, um, if you want to learn more basic stuff about Reaper, check out the Promix Academy Ultimate Reaper course. Link is down in the description, of course. Uh, that's where I take you right from day one, right through to starting to experiment with some of this more advanced stuff. Hope you found this interesting, and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye, guys.